I was born in 1882 as the seventh child of Horatio and Sally Fisher. My mother taught me all that I needed to know until I was 16 when I went down to the county seat and got my teaching certificate. I should have known, having grown up alongside so many siblings, that I did not quite have what it takes to become a teacher. Instead, with the support of my family behind me, I took on what was to be my first battleground, pharmacy school. Being the second woman to receive a degree in pharmacy in the state of Texas was a feat, to be sure. However, I wanted more. I would soon find more in the form of the fight for suffrage, but first, I went and fell in love. He was the handsome man I ever saw, and still is, even after all these years. For what felt like ages, but was only a few moments. After one delightful year, Bill asked for my hand in marriage. We were wedded soon after. We were not wealthy by any means. My wedding dress was simple, though I still felt like the most beautiful woman alive. I swear that time stopped when I walked into that chapel and locked eyes with him. I'll never forget that day. Mark chapter 10, verses 6 through 9 say this. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. Do you, Beverly Jean Cunningham, take Minnie Fisher to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Do you, Minnie Fisher, take this man, Beverly Jean Cunningham, to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. After our wedding, we moved into our first house together. This first day did not last long, as BJ was looking for more opportunities as an attorney. We lived in Huntsville first. There, I worked at a drugstore as a pharmacist. Who's some of the matters? Well, after speaking with some of the men I work with, I have figured out that I make less than half of what they make. I do not understand the reason behind this, as our hours and our responsibilities are the same. So, I was hoping that this could be remedied. Well, it's not so simple, my dear. You're an excellent pharmacist, but you're a woman. And it's simply Keyword. It is simply a principle that men get higher wages than women. I do not make the rules, so I will not change the rules. If you don't like this, if you don't like your wages, I, I can only suggest you can go to, to some other line of work. Otherwise, I'll have to ask you to drop this better at once. Thank you for your time, sir. I will take your advice and consideration. My Minnie, your singing was beautiful today. God has truly blessed you with a voice like an angel. Yes, I must agree. I am so glad you made time in your schedule to join the Trinity Church Choir. We are certainly glad to have you. Minnie, we would love to have your help for the coming better. Maybe you could sing some of Wow, your offer is very generous. And I'm very gracious. I'm afraid I already have too much to do. What is that husband of you got you up to that you can't even want to know? <laughs> Funnily enough, it's not his idea, it's mine. You see, 
I sign myself up for quite a few clubs and organizations, and I already have other responsibilities to attend to. That reminds you, Minnie. I heard a rumor that you were a member of a suffrage club. I am sure this is not true, of course, but I must ask nevertheless. You heard correctly, actually. I... I dare say that this club is even the one that I devote most of my time to. I think, actually, you could all come during the next meeting. It would be the talk of the town. You cannot be serious. Voting is a task for men, not women. God has ordained us to take care of our homes and children. Politics does not involve us. It is such a nasty, gruesome operation. I cannot believe you would be interested in such things, man. Think of it this way. Men, they don't know what it's like to take care of the house and children. So whenever they pass laws and bills that affect those things, don't you think we should have a say in it instead? We know what it's like to actually do that. That's why it would be so important for our voices to be heard with our folks. I do believe. Though I experienced failure often when trying to convince others to support our cause, I found great joy in attending the Galveston Equal Suffrage Association, where I found women who shared my passion in great numbers. One of these women was Annette Finnegan. She was the current president of the Texas Women's Suffrage Association, an organization of which I was quite fond of and helped to create. The weather's a little safer than it is. So far, I want to talk to you about something. I see the passion and desire to make change for the world. How would you like to join the Texas Women's Suffrage Association as an agent for the summer? Who knows what possibilities might arise if you were to take this role? Oh, I have a wonderful opportunity. I will not disappoint you. But if I could, I would like to make some other things too. One of the forces are if you were to report us to the future of the community. All of which are currently. Begin writing right away. Annette, how good it is to see you. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Minnie. When you sent that telegram, I feared the worst, but you look well. What is it that you were wishing to talk with me about? I sent you the telegram because I wanted to discuss the matter of my upcoming retirement. Oh no, retirement? Oh, I'm fine. But, you see, I'm currently the president of the Texas Women's Suffrage Association, and with my term coming to an end, I'm looking to nominate a successor. Of course, you will have to run and be voted in, but with those many accomplishments of yours, I believe it's going to be a pretty easy campaign. You mean to nominate me as a successor? While I'm honored, I truly don't think I'm the best choice. Not only do we need someone like you, someone so energetic and with that many accomplishments to speak to our new generation, but, you see, my health is becoming impaired. Both of my sisters are now married and I would like to spend more time with them. And the doctor just wants me to slow down because I have developed this numbness in my right arm. But why me? Of all the wonderful women you know, I mean, I mean you have four wonderful qualities that can mean the salvation of women, and with what women will bring to the politics, the salvation of our nation, the tact, the freedom, youth, and a professional degree. Might I remind you that my relationship with my husband is in doubt, and I'll have to return to pharmaceutical work if I'm to live without his wages. Do not worry about this, Minnie. As long as you're the president of the association, you will have a living wage. Now drink some tea. <laughs> well, I will humbly accept, albeit with extreme humility. But enough of this. Tell me about everything. Oh, I'll tell you. 
was shocked to be nominated, but honored nonetheless. Though my mind was always focused on winning the vote, there were other problems at hand. Like I had told Annette, there were concerns with BJ and me. BJ was not so supportive of my activism these days, and I was beginning to wonder if it was a logical choice to get a divorce. Tell me everything, baby. What's the problem with your husband? Men can be fickle, sure, but from my understanding, he was indifferent towards your involvement in the movement. Well, he was in the beginning, but men, they say that they're open to new ideas, new relationships, and they act happy for you, but it's like the smile of an alligator. It's all a facade. So he isn't really okay with your work? <sighs> no. That Carrie here, I heard that she married the ideal man. They were together, like a team. But my husband, he just doesn't understand what it takes to turn his ideas into just fully recognizing them. I can see why that would be quite frustrating. From what you tell me, I would guess that he also does not easily get into change of compromise. No, BJ has very interesting ideas about how a home should be run. And his pride gets in the way when his visions don't go as he expects. It only got worse with the miscarriages and the loss of our adopted children. Oh, Mimi, it seems like you're unable to reason with me. What happened to the children you adopted? I know it was no fault of yours, dear. The family in Illinois took them. I couldn't do much about it. And the loss was heavy. I tried to... I tried to soothe the pain in my husband with kindness, but I just didn't stop my activities. It's, very cool. it's quite amusing how men attempt to commit to themselves with timetables, their expectations. They speak for us poems. They make laws that we must follow. They represent our voices, and yet they won't even listen to us. But they cannot possibly represent us. They cannot speak for a woman who has gone bankrupt and cannot get a job, or a woman who is widowed with no money in her hand, not even a place to own because we cannot have property. They, they can't, they can't speak for the poor or the prostitutes because their voices don't matter to them, but they matter to us. I mean, you don't have to listen to me. Certainly not me, but I think we should accept it Finnegan's offer to succeed her as prison. Your husband may run the house, but you can run our association. <laughs> Maybe he'll see how important you are and finally treat you as an equal. Who knows? <laughs> I think this is whenever, whenever it all began. Whenever her father had made her and her siblings run a farm so they could afford to live. I think this is also whenever she began to resent her father for making her do all of this as a child. I think she had learned to ignore all the men in her life so that she could get what she wanted, without their help. And you thought you would be the only exception? I mean, are you going to divorce her? Well, she's still my wife. For now, at least. But that may change sometime soon. Because I don't think she'll ever have time to be mother. She'll never be a mother with all these clubs and associations that she's involved in. All they do, to, all they do is gather together to dissect and condemn men and make each other believe that they'll get the rights that they'll never ever get. I think that, uh... I think that if their fantasies ever do become a reality, that we men might be in danger. There's little chance of that happening. I mean, women novels are gonna stay just that. Fiction. Things finally came to a head one evening, after dinner. I admit I had been distracted with work, but my nomination to become president of the Texas Women's Suffrage Association was something I could not take lightly, so campaigning and correspondence were of the utmost importance. <sighs> what is it, BJ? Do you need something? Yes, I do need something. Could you stop writing for a second and sit down? Please. Alright. 
What is it that we need to discuss? Our marriage, of course, or lack thereof. It feels like I'm married to a politician and not my wife. What is it that you're suggesting? That we separate? What is it that you're suggesting? That we separate? My activism will not cease because of your discomfort with it. I respect you, BJ. I truly do. But you cannot govern my life. I thought you understood that. I respect that you're tenacity. And that I respect you for your desire, your desire for change. This has gone too far. You're never home. You attempt to have dinner prepared for me, but half the time you get home later than I do. It feels like I'm married to a man and not, not a woman. I want my wife back in here. And if you can't be that for me, then I guess we'll have to separate. Society has always been against me. BJ, out of everyone I knew, I thought you understood. That's why I married you. However, I'm not going to change for any man, including you. What if we separated in every single way? Except for the people like So that we keep our societal sin. How does that sound? Our separation was the end of any romantic involvement I ever had. I simply did not have time for it if I was to be fully dedicated to the movement. I quickly made arrangements to live elsewhere and focused again on what was truly important to me. Ladies, it is now time to nominate our next president for the association. I believe that the best person for the job is you, Annette. You have the experience, connections, and personality, which makes you the most ideal person for the job. Well, ladies, even though I really wholeheartedly appreciate your opinions, I must remind you that I intend to play a less involved role. But you can still count on my financial support. So, anyone can nominate another worthy to fill in the shoes? Doesn't the importance of this association and the importance of the human rights ball? Uh, I should like to nominate Annie Webb Langton. She has the education that such a position requires. She barely graduated with her master's, and she has a permanent position in the state among of other educators. Well, even though I really appreciate that, and I think she would be great for the position, I have already spoken to her, and she is interested in running for the president of the Texas Teacher Association, which she believes will be much better for her talents. And this winning victory will be great for our women as well. Therefore, we need another candidate. And by the way, even though Maud Fisher is not in presence right now, she sent a letter where she is nominating. She is nominating. Let, let me read the letter to you. I would like to nominate our leader of the Galveston branch of the Texas Women's Suffrage Association, Minnie Fisher Cunningham, for the state presidency. As a fellow member with Minnie of the Wednesday Club of Galveston, I can say it was amazing how diligently she did the readings each week, led the discussions, and heightened the intelligence of the women in the group. Cunningham is not only fluent with the work of Charlotte Gilman and our new national leader Carly Chapman Catt, but she also knows the opposition, works by Annie Riley Hale and others. Mrs. Cunningham is polite, hardworking, a friend of all who strive for the great cause, and articulate. I would like to second the nomination for Miss Minnie. Not only is she a great record keeper, but she's also been doing so much work towards the state of Texas legislature, and she knows many of the Texas legislators. She's an excellent record keeper. She's great in voice and words. She's great with her words, very articulate, and I believe she would be a great president. I would like to note that while Cunningham does like some of your, some of your more prestige and I would like to note, Annette, that while Cunningham does lack some of your connections and prestige, she's a young and passionate advocate of women's suffrage, if I have ever seen one. She will make an excellent candidate for the president. Well, with that second nomination, the Executive Board of the Texas Women's Suffrage Association recommends Minnie Fisher Cunningham for state president. Are there any other objections or are there any other nominations? Would anyone here like to share an idea that would allow all of our smaller clubs and organizations to participate? 
What if we delegated a week, and during that week, denied ourselves of something that would normally cost money, and then we could put it towards financing state work? I am concerned, Helen, if the cost of advertising such a campaign will cancel out the resulting funds. Eleanor, your concern is noted. Helen, however, is on the right path. Let's meet in the middle. Helen, you can share a committee to find multiple ways for smaller groups to participate, and one of these will be a letter writing committee. We can also include a set of guides for the letter writing committee. Sending a letter to just the presence of these organizations will minimize our investment and allow groups to tailor their involvement specifically for their region. Would that resolve your fiscal concerns, Eleanor? Yes, that is reasonable. Shall we vote on it and pass the self-sacrifice week as one of our first acts of this convention? All who, all who vote in favor of this act, raise your hand, please. All right, all those opposed? Then it's settled. We shall set aside one week wherein we make a financial sacrifice to donate those funds towards our cause. It will be called Self-Sacrifice Week. I will get a consensus on the dates for this and send them out in letter form to all the clubs. Minnie Fisher Cunningham, the bane of antis everywhere. Thank you so much for coming to see me. I know we are so close to achieving suffrage. Just shortly, I know we will. And history will show you were a pivotal part of our success. You're too kind, Miss Kent. You've always been the one to bring about great change on a national level as president of the National American Women's Suffrage Association. I'm honored to have the chance to meet with you and your friends here in our nation's capital. Thank you. Annette has told me all about you, and I am looking forward to working with the person we are certain will finally break the hold that we that will finally break the hold that the Solid South has on women's suffrage. I appreciate your confidence and I hope that will not be misplaced. I'm thankful that my position as president of the Texas Association will allow for no more trivial responsibility. With your talent and ambition, we'll succeed. No doubt of it. To have our rights enshrined in the Constitution is something that we have been fighting for for years. More than 50 referendums, which are very costly, 500 legislative campaigns, and yet we still wait. A white man can ensure that his voice is heard through voting, regardless of his amoral lifestyle. He could even be a criminal, and it's still acceptable. While the rest of us have no voice. Ladies. The season is at hand when men who desire to hold office in the national and state legislative bodies are announcing their candidacy and explaining their platforms to the public. They need to declare their opinions on women's suffrage. We need to make appointments with our local candidates and able to discern we need to make appointments with our local candidates in order to discern their positions as well. This is the most important piece of work to do with suffrage in the near future. This is the most important piece of suffrage. No? This is the most important piece of work to do with suffrage in the near future. So we cannot fail. Remember, no chair is stronger than its weakest link. Here, here. I believe we're all doing very important work and that there are no weak links among us. Helen, your work as vice president has been amazing. And Jesse, your staunch opposition to lynching 
has been invaluable to society as a whole. And not only that, but I heard that you've recently become president of your own equal suffrage movement. That's correct, Eleanor, but you mustn't exclude your accomplishments as the president of the San Antonio Equal Franchise Society. Your wisdom is always welcome for discussion and planning. We always learn one or two things from you. I must know that your speech was truly inspirational, Minnie. I see many great things to come over the horizon. We must keep up the good fight if we wish to right all of the wrongs of the past. While today may have been important for the movement, we still need to remain diligent. There are serious adversaries who would like to see us fall. Pauline Wells and Ida Darden are wholeheartedly making their feelings about our association known. They're even making one of their own, which is sure to cause us trouble. But I say that we need to stay on guard and keep our spirits up, always making sure. But we need to stay on guard and always keep our spirits up, always making sure that we are ready to explain why equal suffrage is necessary. You're correct, me. Uh, we will end it up to remind focus on our past. It is not just your fellow women who want to see us fail, but the men power as well. I hear that they tried to pick up a name and they couldn't even vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> they think that give us a vote means uh, their life holds are at stake. Well, I'd say they are. We're coming of those next. <laughs> Good morning to all of you women who have traveled from all over Texas, leaving your homes and children to rally against those that wish to see us become involved in matters that we should not be privy to. You are here because you wish to save the citadel of the home. After all, you know that suffrage is the next step towards socialism and complete anarchy. These suffragettes don't want to raise children or marry a man. They wish to go against the natural order of society and take the man's position. It is absurd and outrageous, and I am so encouraged to see so many of you here today that are against this hearsay. Now, you know I could stand and speak for hours on this subject, but I have someone else who would like to speak. She's a young, energetic woman who is the most recent addition to our association as publicity director, Miss Ida Darden from Fort Worth. Thank you, Pauline, for the introduction. I will get straight to the point. These women are using the cause of equal suffrage as a socialist plot to undermine white supremacy in this state and country. It is no wonder these women look and sound like demons, for they are possessed by the devil to carry out his evil deeds. Ladies, mothers, wives, I urge you to take notice of their foul appearances, their ugly snarls, and the way they disrespect those who don't agree with them. They do not want the right to vote. They want tyranny and anarchy. Women like Minnie Fisher Cunningham and her cronies will not stop at suffrage. I'm certain of that. They will not stop until all those who speak against them are stamped out. As proper Christians and humble servants of God and country, we must rise to defend our constitution and what it stands for. Ladies, we know who is God. Ladies, we know who is God, and we will not partake from the table of Jezebel. I say we throw them out to the dogs. I am here to represent Southern chivalry. I would like to present the minority plank on women's suffrage, which ought to be the majority plank. The Democratic Party has always stood for the sovereignty of the states and the control and regulation of elections. And we firmly affirm the historic principles of our party, the wise provisions of the Constitution, giving the states the power to determine the qualifications of their electors. Our purpose is to prevent the suffrage states from endeavoring to tell all the other states what they ought to do. And does anyone really think that President Woodrow Wilson is going to be intimidated by the switching skirts of a few thousand militant suffragettes? I, for one, do not!
Governor, I fail to see the purpose of making this a state's issue. The majority plank does not want to address this at the moment. Well, I... The governor makes a man of strong demolishes it. That is not the issue at hand here. I fail to see anything in the federal constitution that is contained within the minority plank. After leading the Texas Equal Suffrage Association to St. Louis to join the National American Women's Suffrage Association's demonstration in support of equal suffrage, we were disheartened to learn that it failed to pass. In turn, Ferguson's hostile plank received 181 votes, while 888 voted against it. The position was adopted to the platform despite our Texas governor's attempts to avoid it. We quickly rallied to protest Ferguson's hostile message. Amid my travels with Lavinia, I managed to secure a hearing before the Democratic Platform Committee at their post-primary state meeting in Houston. I was expecting to be wallowed by Ferguson, but I was hopeful that I might find a hero who could head a minority report. I knew these men only allowed us a hearing because it was amusing to hear women plead for rights, but still, I could not pass such an opportunity up. They regarded my impassioned speech with cold hostility, but the more I abused their ideals, the more amused they became. In the end, they gave us quite an ovation. Ladies, I am indebted to all of you who have joined me here in Austin in our new temporary headquarters while the legislature is being convened. Our ultimate goal is to pass a primary bill that will allow us to vote primaries. Our work here must be persistent, but I believe that we can get it done. I'm so excited to be here helping you all. I'm sure my youth will be a welcome change to your ranks. <laughs> Thank you, Vinny. This keen young lady here is from Maryland. She has been a wonderful speaker for all cause in North Carolina, and I have already found a wonderful companion in her. I hope all of you will as well. Well, I've heard nothing but inspiring things from those who have heard your speeches. Welcome to Austin, Lavinia. While your youth can be deceiving and also worrying, I believe that many knows best when it comes to picking representatives for our cause. So, book. Uh, but what you don't know about me, ma'am, is that my su mother was a suffragette as well. So I have experience. I also have other qualities that might prove useful, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it will be a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Lavinia. But we have to take your manners in hand. If we pass the primary suffrage bill, it's going to limit our focus for the next two months. We cannot be wasting our time like that. Jesse is right. Let's begin. Though we all worked diligently to garner support for the primary suffrage bill, it ultimately failed to pass. However, we were growing more excited on another front. Governor Ferguson to make larger and larger blunders, and it was only a matter of time before he might be removed from office. Our discreet organizational work managed to go unnoticed in the best way possible. Ferguson was impeached in July, to our great satisfaction. William Hobby replaced him as governor. It was a new age for Texas, and thus began our attempts to get Hobby on the side of the suffragists. The women were quite a factor in awakening Texas against they lobbied their cases with every state senator. I find that rather impressive, but also quite concerning. Arnold, these suffragists, these suffragists have proven themselves. I know you are not strenuously allied with their favorite causes as I am, but they did on a state level what others are doing in many of our Western communities. They're forcing us, men, to clean up our acts. Thank God Ferguson is impeached and it's gone forever. So, as for the new governor, William, what do you make of this situation? Arnold, my friend, I have never embraced women's suffrage, nor do I see it as something that I need to do. However, I must disagree with you about Ferguson. He has told his supporters, I have heard that he has told his supporters that he is planning on running for governor despite his impeachment. If he were to win, not only would that make our great state a laughing stock, but he would also throw a wrench at the very legal system of our state.
So you don't think he can do it? Do you? You just have to follow the money. Those German brewers and saloon keepers, they're not going to give up their alcohol. And they can definitely see a needy man with a political machine anytime they see one. That fool Ferguson has poured in so many people that he probably has a small army beholden to him. I mean, we just have to accept the fact that he just has the charisma to attract very poor old whites that just feel that they're credit out of politics. And he has no shame in using that for his own evil intentions. Oh God, tell me this is a dream. An illegal governor, pardoning criminals, encouraging German subversion, and hiring conmen into state offices and our state government. This is, this is a fictional novel. This isn't even a real situation. Gentlemen, we cannot give Ferguson an issue that will help him joke his way back into office. That is exactly why, Chuck, I, I'm just not in support of the women's suffrage. Minnie, look at this. We're at war. Can you believe it? Oh, I can believe it, Lavinia. And with the war effort, now I have much more to do. Now there's the war effort, and still impeaching Ferguson, and I'm still advocating for suffrage bills. We won't have any time for any trivial matters. You know, this paper also mentions Ferguson. He's still going after the University of Texas. He really has stuck to his plan of engaging in the biggest bear fight the state has ever seen. I hope he realizes that he's doomed now. The war will only serve to amplify our voices if my intentions are to be carried out. You know, it also says he accepted over $156,000 in loans from German brewers and conveniently hasn't been able to pay them back. And he pardons hundreds of criminals every month. People wonder how he pays for this all, except through kickbacks. The biggest thing is that he opposes suffrage. The most obnoxious thing is that he says suffragists don't raise children, just poodles. I wonder if he has any in mind. He says the most ignorant things. Why don't you go after him? His position on suffrage clearly frustrates you, and he certainly won't be considering any prohibition bills. Well... The war is now our main priority. We must show the public that we will tirelessly and selflessly contribute to the war effort. If you won't go after him, I will, through less acceptable means. Oh, Lydia. how grateful I am that Carrie, Cat, and Annette Finnegan arranged for you to be with us. You are full of so much life, and you're an extremely talented speaker and one of my closest comrades. But do not fret. I have a plan on the Ferguson front. But it can't involve any frivolity or publicity. We will send letters to every Texan suffragette across the state and slowly but surely build up pressure for impeachment. Oh, Minnie, I should have known you'd have a trick up your sleeve. You're such a sly gal. These men will not give us the vote as a kind gesture, so we need to use our voice. My foolish brother says that each week he and his friends go out to a hotel for drinks. Each week, someone discusses a quote made by the governor about women, and they all laugh. They don't even like Ferguson. They just think he's funny. That's the reason why I left Roger. I mean, can tell you something to persuade. And you might believe him, but later on he's gonna go with his friends and joke about that. Ray wasn't really into alcohol, but it was something there that made him different. A new reality always can, where they begin to believe that any promise given to a woman can be broken. Jesse, you're right that Ferguson is a prime example of what we're up against. With his latest attack on the University of Texas, his ties with the Brewers, and his pro German element, we may have a chance to impeach him. If we can help take him down for all of his corruption, we may grow to develop allies within the legislator who will grow to depend on us for our support. I propose we form a new organization where our club women can enlarge our group. We will call it the Women's Campaign for Good Government. 
This will be a large undertaking. Are you sure it's worth the dedication to create this separate organization? Well, we wouldn't be taking money out of the treasury to support this, could we? Ladies, I believe Minnie is onto something. One of my friends, William Hogg, brother of I, the Hogg, and son of the former governor, that we have an airtight case against Ferguson. All we need is enough public pressure to dramatize the regret that people have of having elected him in the first place. In the first place, I'm sorry. If we can help topple him, the legislature may learn to respect us. We're all gonna take to afford all of this. We're already getting the best speakers and club is less than the minimum wage. Jesse, I believe some men would be willing to help us and pay us in this effort. Ferguson's ties with the German viewers put him in the crosshairs of our Our discreet organizational work managed to go unnoticed in the best way possible. Ferguson was impeached in July to our great satisfaction. William Hobby replaced him as governor. It was a new age for Texas, and thus began our attempts to get Hobby on the side of the suffragists. Welcome! Welcome! Today we celebrate the devil's demise! It is so invigorating to finally have that horrid man out of office and finally have a supporter. Speaking of, is the new governor in? Oh, not yet, but I'm sure he'll be here. He knows I'm here. Hola, amiga! Hey, my dear. You're dressed pretty nice today, huh? Oh, why, thank you. It's a celebration. I just had to throw something special together. I call it Death to the Devil. Nice to see you, Lavinia. Oh, good to see you. What a celebration. Where's Mrs. Cunningham? Oh, follow me right this way. Welcome, Governor. Congratulations on your new position. Thank you, thank you. I mean, we do owe a lot of our state's liberation to your fearless friends, the suffragists. I mean, they have done so much to ensure that we have a good future. Oh, Governor Hobby, it is just so amazing that at only 39 years of age, you are not only Texas's youngest governor, but you are also a prolific writer and journalist who, like many of the women here, have chronicled chronicled many of the evils of our time. Tell me, when did you first notice that something was wrong with Ferguson? Well, he's always been corrupt, corrupt ever since he owned that bank in Temple, Texas. People knew about it. That's how he got into politics. You know, I once thought about being a bank teller, but I lost interest. <laughs> you want to know what the worst part about being addicted to banking is? What? The withdrawals. <laughs> I am frankly quite shocked at what Lavinia is wearing today. She will give the governor a wrong impression of who we are and what we represent. Well, Governor Hoppy is quite young, and he's still unmarried, and Lavinia is quite talented. I truly believe her heart is in the right place. Come in. Thank you for granting me this audience, Governor. I am pleased to get the chance to meet you, Minnie. You and your association have done so much to help Texas. And we could continue to do so as voters. Do you know how hard it is, Governor, to lobby in Austin when your constituency is not even on the electorate? I know you want a more honest democracy. Why don't you support suffrage and gain a devoted voting base? Minnie, do you realize the danger that the state of Texas is in? Half the voters are upset. They don't want to send their voice into trenches. They resent the poor taxes, and they resent the as ascendancy of rich women when poor men are the ones doing all the sacrifices, making all the sacrifices. I urge you to call off this showy involvement with women's suffrage and just keep working as you are, silently and, well, efficiently. If you don't do that, then we will have the return of a governor that is illegal. 
He will cripple the war efforts. Make and he He will also make any provision that does occur a sham and well he will set back the course of women's suffrage. You're right, Governor. We are in danger. And that is exactly why women must eternally rectify this terrible course our state is headed towards. I don't know, Minnie. I don't know if this is the right choice to make. I'm sorry. If this is everything you came here to say, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Nothing's going to change my mind today. After several months of trying and failing to garner support for suffrage from Hobby, I decided to take a break and leave it up to Lavinia. She would be our best chance with Hobby. He had enjoyed her presence at the impeachment celebration so much that he had employed her to give speeches on his behalf. Meanwhile, I headed to Washington for my first lobbying stint at the National American Women's Suffrage Association Annual Convention. We were making great progress, but my efforts were interrupted when I fell ill with measles. Waiter, please bring us some tea for everyone. We're celebrating another victory for the suffrage movement. I know you all may be wondering how much I leaned on Jesse to deplete our treasury for this celebration, but this victory meal is actually courtesy of Annette Finnegan, who knew we would be exhausted and ecstatic. I have something to add to the celebration of winning the primary vote in July. We must give a toast to our founder, Annette, to Governor Hobby's support, and to the passing of the 18th Amendment, which supported the national ban on alcohol. I would also like to add a special toast to you ladies. Your sacrifices have made this possible. I can toast to that, Eleanor. Here, here. You're here. Now, on to our next mission. I propose we do something like Alice Paul has been doing, a hunger strike. How can you identify with someone like that? Alice Paul is nothing less than a female thug. Alice Paul, Mrs. Moore, knows that 20 million American women are going to be ignored politically until they learn to fight politically. She knows, Mrs. Moore, that the world would not be in the state that it is if only American women had fought and demanded for their rights earlier. Enough, you two. Lavinia, remember what I told you about how Texas is different and will be different? Please keep your promise to me. All right, I shall concede for now. Why, Vinny, what are you doing? Uh, I think I should leave. My thoughts and ideas are not well received here. But why? You're more important to the cause than anyone. We need you here. We need your outlandish ideas to help the Southern cause. I think the other suffragists would disagree with you on that. Uh, forget them. You mean more to me than you know. You've already become my best friend. <sighs> to be honest, I'm beginning to tire of your constant companionship. And your friends are utterly insufferable. Vinny, we are five miles away from a military base. If you get caught... They will lock you up. If they even assume that you are a loose woman, or, God forbid, hit you with one of those automobiles, or even, even worse, snatch you, you may never be seen again. Can you endeavor to stay with me until Christmas, at least? All right, I'll stay. I I'm sorry, Minnie. It's just last night's dinner got me really flustered. Uh, Mrs. Moore and I don't often see eye to eye. <laughs> well, that's precisely why I need you here. You're the only one who can rile up Helen like you can. Her looks of shock amuse me every time. <laughs> In the months following our first success with the primary suffrage bill, some issues arose that were extremely worrying. The most concerning and debilitating was the outbreak of the Spanish flu. Oh, Vinny, it's such a beautiful day today, isn't it? I'm hoping to hear from my executive committee that they're still well and haven't fallen dreadful. I mean, 
haven't fallen victim to this dreadful influenza virus. Yes, there will be a miracle if we make it through with no major losses. Vinny, are you feeling okay? You sound tired. Oh, I, you know, I'm not feeling well all of a sudden. Vinny, you're burning up. We need to get you to bed right now. Now I'm going to give you this terrible disease and bring down the whole effort in Texas. <laughs> Vinny, Vinny, I wouldn't do this if I didn't love you as my dearest sister. I give my life to the cause, but now you're more important. Are you feeling any better? <sighs> they said this was just the ordinary gripe, but <laughs> why is it... But why is it... What? But why is it only affecting young people? And why are my eyes bleeding? Oh my, Vinny! She can't breathe, and now she says her eyes are bleeding. I can't get a hold of a physician. The newspapers in Austin are lying about this. I saw a horse-drawn wagon collecting bodies yesterday. They say this is an ordinary flu, and they're even going forward with an America First parade but I don't know of an unaffected family in our entire neighborhood. And the symptoms are terrible! Don't worry about the eyes. We've had that here too. Make sure she gets plenty of tea and walks around frequently. They are lying to us as well here in San Antonio. They went ahead with the Liberty Loan Parade even though they know that people are dying. It seems that no one wants to impair our economy or the war effort. Don't you worry about things. Send me troublesome mail. Helen can work on it as well. Try to keep her spirits up. She may be at a very crucial phase of the influenza. Oh, Minnie, I think you saved my life. I'm feeling much better. The bleeding has stopped in my eyes, and even my arms are looking much better. <sighs> Minnie, I think this is going to be the best Christmas yet. Revolutionaries have taken over Germany. The armistice is holding. And I think even the flu is running its course. But above all, I'm just happy to see my little Vinnie looking so well. Oh, Minnie, I... Oh, Minnie, thank you so much for all of your care. I, I want to stay with you now for the rest of the fight. But, Minnie, a few things. I cannot do any more organizing on the grassroots level or by mock meetings. If you got a crowd, fine, but I will not get on my hands and knees and beg every matron I see. Oh, Vinny, I want you to be happy and healthy as long as you're here. I can easily meet your demands, as you are the hope of all, but I'm sorry I can't detach myself from you further. I just worry about your escapades. Having you here in Washington as a lobbyist has been a joy. However, Mrs. Cunningham, I'm hearing some disturbing things coming out of Texas. Texas was set to approve the 19th Amendment. It just needs the legislature to vote for it. But I hear someone is complicating the issue. Mrs. Cunningham, please tell me you have a plan for this. I'm afraid I feel stuck. If I leave, I fear our work on the federal amendment will be lost. If I stay, I fear that Governor Hobby will pass the amendment on the state level very soon. I've been trying to imply that the national amendment is our new focus, but he wants women for his reelection and he wants them now. To lose Texas is not an embarrassment we can afford. This is such a waste of resources. It will take 50 speakers, $100,000 to blanket the whole state in literature. Those resources will have to come from somewhere, somewhere else where they're desperately needed. This is not a fight we should have to have. Believe me, Miss Cat, 
I am as upset as you are. This is a tactical blunder of the highest magnitude. Governor Hobby gives us this alligator smile. He says he fights for us. He has never fought for us. He merely uses us. So are the anti-suffragists who voted in support of the state amendment after realizing our strategy. I am loath to say it, but you have to go back to Texas. We cannot afford to let your false friend make this a state's issue by adding it to a ballot in May. I understand. Jane McCallum has done my job the best she could, given the circumstances. But if I go back, I will be able to bring our winning plan to Texas. I will feign happiness over this amendment, lest we be seen as ungrateful. And I will continue lobbying for national support. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Carrie, for all the support and wisdom you have given me on this matter. Of course. Are you working alone today, Lavinia? Yes. What with the recent election outcome and an unfortunate encounter at dinner last night, many spirit needed some time to recover. Oh, uh, I brought her this cake in order to, you know, lighten her spirits. That is so kind, Helen. I do I might have a slice so that your efforts are not wasted. I do not mind. But do tell, what happened last night? Uh, Pauline Wells and Ida Darden happened to be dining at the same place as Minnie. Darden decided to make a fool of herself in, a, in an attempt to disgrace Minnie publicly. Mm -hmm. That is such a shame that she was publicly insulted like that. It must be rough for you as well, being so far away from home, that is. Oh, I have been feeling very useless to the movement as of late. Even with my work for Hobby, I have been doing very little. Despite Hobby's untrustworthy nature, he seems to think that Washington will soon pass the 19th Amendment and all Texas will need to do is ratify it. Well, I thought he didn't care about women's suffrage. Oh, but Helen, he does. He does. The thing is, the male vote on suffrage in Texas has proven to him that he needs our vote to remain in power. I get the sense that however terrible the outcome was, the Hobby crowd has finally converted to the cause. Now, we need Washington to lead the way. Ladies, last week's historic vote in Congress brought the 19th Amendment to the states. Because their legislature was already in session, the states of Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan have already voted to ratify the women's right to vote. Governor Hobby and the other Governor Hobby and other members of the Texas legislature are pushing for an early resolution to the legislature, and I believe we will have a vote by the third week in July. How exciting. But what is the danger that the vote of the constitutional amendment in Texas, which we just lost, will the voters will induce the legislature to change their position? There is no doubt that our legislative friends will now be shaky. The antis will try to make a lot of noise after that last election. Mimi, you do realize that if you call out the team, the legal team, again, you could be pleading your salary? That's a risk I'm willing to take. I can help you take that risk. Thank you for your support, Eleanor. Finally, we will need to re-pledge the legislators. We will need every volunteer we can get on the state level. So, Minnie, do you think it's possible? Do you think we could really become the first southern state to ratify the right for women to vote? I do believe so, Eleanor, as long as the antis don't make a move in the Senate. Congratulations, Mrs. Cunningham. You have done it. You have broken the solid south. Texas was the sweetest win. Other southern states did not have your leadership, and it showed. Your dedication, your organization, you outwitted the governor. You are truly a shining star. Thank you, Miss Cat, and 
I thank all of the women in the National for the fine gifts they gave me last night at the suffrage house. I'm glad you liked that. Now that the ordeal is over, Mrs. Cunningham, how do you really feel? I am completely and utterly exhausted. I know there will be those who wish me I know there will be those who wish for me to enlist in new ventures, but I must say the sacrifice is starting to feel not worth it compared to the small victories. That I do recall Ida Darden deriding me for being separated from my husband. At this point, I don't think I will ever reunite with him, though my wife is now akin to that of a Catholic nun, and I'm not in the least satisfied with that. At least I have my friendships to sustain me, even when coming home to an empty house is very depressing for the soul. Mrs. Cunningham, I was married twice. After I lost them, I found that kind of lifelong companionship in Molly Hayes. We share the fight, our happiness, our joys, passions. Her love has been so very precious to me. In fact... What are you implying? Molly and I share our hearts. I'm not... I cannot say more than that. Society does not approve of what we feel, but <laughs> I have never been one to seek society's approval anyway. <laughs> what I'm saying, Mrs. Cunningham, is seek your happiness first. I don't think I can accept that kind of happiness. My faith taught me not to judge another human. And I have too many faults and sins of my own to do so. I just don't think that it's right for me, at least. However, I feel humbled that you felt comfortable enough to tell me this. And I will endeavor to prove your choice worthy by not speaking on this matter to anyone else. Thank you. After many years of lobbying and working as president of the Texas Equal Suffrage Association, our ultimate goal was achieved. Tennessee was the last state needed to ratify the 19th Amendment in August of 1920. It will remain one of the best days of my entire life. I hope everyone appreciates these apricot Bellini mocktails. They're a gift from the ladies in San Antonio to commemorate the fact that the 19th Amendment has passed into the U.S. Constitution. Cheers to, that, to San Antonio. Cheers to all of the women of the United States. Uh, a toast is not satisfactory. We must have a victory parade. Come on, everyone. Hooray! <coughs> Excuse me, ladies. I know we are having fun here, but I think we will need to move on. There is something I would like to do before we continue. Speech! Speech! Looking back at the woman campaign, at the suffrage campaign, I think there was a golden opportunity whenever Miss Minnie Fisher Cunningham led us to win the primary vote for women in this state. And with that moment, a golden pen was used to sign that bill into law. To commemorate Miss Minnie Fisher Cunningham, golden accomplishments, I would like to present her that pen. Thank you, Bobby. We are indebted to you for your support with our campaign. Ladies. Women and men alike came together to support our right to vote and with their collaboration, we have finally gotten that. But now, we cannot waste that opportunity. Pause a moment. 
We must use our right in the upcoming elections and show the nation that we did not fight for nothing. I know all of you made I know all of you made sacrifices necessary for this cause. And I want to personally thank you for that. Without any of you, we couldn't have made it nearly as far. But enough talk. Let's celebrate. Though I have continued to work in politics, even running for U.S. Senator and Governor of Texas, I did not win. But it was because of my earlier success in suffrage that I was able to do so much more afterwards. I am forever grateful to Annette Finnegan for her faith to me as her successor, which catapulted me into the role I was meant to fill.